All right, this video is going to continue the Aristotle reading on substances. And this is just going to be from the section that's entitled in the paper on generation and corruption. So much then on these topics. Next, we must state what the difference is between coming to be and alteration, for we maintain that these changes are distinct from one another. Since then, we must distinguish A, the substratum, and B, the property whose nature it is to be predicated of the substratum. And since change of each of these occurs, there is alteration when the substratum is perceptible and persists, but changes in its own properties, the properties in question being opposed to one another as contraries or as intermediates. So there's alteration when this substratum of which things can be predicated or that has properties um, present in it, the properties change, but the substratum stays the same. This body, for example, although persisting in the same body, is now healthy and now ill. And the bronze is now spherical and at another time angular, and yet remains the same bronze. So those are examples where there's alteration. The same body admits first of being healthy and then of being sick. And the bronze admits of one shape and then a different shape, but it's still the same piece of bronze. But when nothing perceptible persists in its identity as a substratum, and the thing changes as a whole, when, for example, the seed as a whole is converted into blood, or water into air, or air as a whole into water, such an occurrence is no longer alteration. It is the coming to be of one substance and the passing away of another. And I think an example that you could think of with the seed as a whole is converted into blood. So if you eat a seed, the seed has now been converted from something that was, you know, a plant substratum into you, namely meat, muscle, bone, stuff like this. Um, so it's entirely changed the substratum. And so something has ceased to be the seed and something else has come to be whatever, you know, muscle or blood you grew from having eaten that seed. If, however, in such cases, any property being one of a pair of contraries persists in the thing that has come to be the same as it was in the thing which has passed away, if, for example, when the water comes to be out of air, both are transparent and cold, the second thing into which the first changes must not be a property of this persistent identical something. Otherwise, the change will be alteration. So even though when air or when water turns into air or air turns into water, so like clouds or something like this, then both can be cold and transparent. They're still different in their substratum. So they can have the same properties, but the substratum has changed. And that's why it's not just an alteration. It is this thing ceasing to be and this other thing coming to be. Suppose, for example, that the musical person passed away and an unmusical person came to be and that the person persists as something identical. So I'm not sure how this would happen, but if you were musical and then you lost your musical ability, then the musical you has ceased to be and the unmusical you, um, well, you have altered from a musical into an unmusical you, but there's a persistence across. Now, if musicalness and unmusicalness had not been a property essentially inhering in people, these changes would have been a coming to be of unmusicalness and a passing away of musicalness. But in fact, musicalness and unmusicalness are a property of the persistent identity, in this case, humans. So because they belong to humans, there's just changes of one thing that continues the same as those properties change. Hence, as regards people, these changes are modifications. So you were modified from a musical to an unmusical person. Though, he adds, as regards musical person and unmusical person, they are a passing away and a coming to be. Consequently, such changes are alteration. So if you're talking about a whole musical person, that person passes away and some unmusical person comes to be, but that's only because you were sort of changing the boundaries of what you were drawing. And part of this is to show that there, there doesn't have to be like a really deep single right way to do it. He's like, well, if you do it this way, then here's an alteration where there was a property that changed. Whereas if you do it with the whole thing, oh, this ceased to be and this came to be. So there isn't like a really sort of deep fundamental difference in that regard. 
When the change from contrary to contrary is in quantity, it is growth and diminution. So getting bigger and getting smaller. When the change from contrary to contrary is in place, it is motion. You move from one place to another. When it is in property, in other words, in quality, it is alteration. So it moves from hot to cold. But when nothing persists of which the resultant is a property or an accident, as opposed to something essential in any sense of the term, it is a coming to be and the converse change is passing away. Matter in the most proper sense of the term is to be identified with the substratum, which is receiving of coming to be and passing away. But the substratum, the substratum of the remaining kinds of change is also in a certain sense matter because these substrata are receptive of contrarieties or the, the two different versions of a contrary of some kind. So much then as an answer to the questions, one, whether coming to be is or is not, in other words, what are the precise conditions of its occurrence? And two, what alteration is, but we still have to treat of growth. So this is just a little bit that's going to set us up because later we're going to see that the substratum, well, substance can't just be matter. Um, but for this, he wants to say there's this important difference between things that come to be and then pass away and things that continue but alter in their properties.